I'm Vin. I'm sorry. That's Booby. And Jolpy and Ghosty. Is Booby still on? Oh, okay. Ghosty is taking care of Booby. Very good. Take care of your little brother. <laughs> uh, For those of you who are new to the channel, this is Ghosty. This is Booby. Yeah. We got um, a plushy ghosty thingamajiggy yes. here. Uh, what's the name of this band? This Royal is Royal Thunder, and the song is Time Machine. Shout out to big homie Neil. Do you remember Neil? We did that collab with him. He, he's remember he's the one that I when I connect to Facebook, it's <laughs> it's his Facebook that comes up. Anyway, shout out to uh, you. Don't remember? Go ahead. He had that big Mexican hat in the I, picture. I, I know what you're talking about. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So anyway, he picked this song, and he said the last two songs that he's he's picked have been like ones that you would like, and so he's like, I think this one will be right up your alley. Sorry. So I hope that it is. I shall not lie. Um, and if you guys like, if anybody's looking for political stuff, head over to Vin and Sorry. For timely, topical, political commentary, yeah, so you can hit us up at just... Middle America with Vin and Sorry. Yeah. Uh, this is $75 partner tier. Uh, there's multiple ways to get yourself um, to get one of your songs requested, um, you can send me an email, you can, uh, send me an Instagram message, <laughs> you can send me a Facebook message, um, but the most systemic way of doing it is to join an alliance, ticket starts at $1 at the gate, and, um, and then you can join an alliance, you get in the club, you make your case there, and you get your song reviewed, or... If you're like me, and you don't want to have to deal with other people to get what you want done, and you want to just go right to the front of the line... A.K.A. you're selfish. Continue. No. I don't believe it's selfishness, because they get to partner with us, and then we use the money for taking care of our children. So, it's actually a very giving thing to do. Uh, uh, you, you can go... go onto our Patreon and jump on the $75 tier for one month, and then you get a song reaction. So, this is what the big homie Neil did. If... And... Go.
I am going to be blasting, blasting this that. song. Mm -hmm. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So did I. Thank you, Neil. Even though you meant it for her. <laughs> this was such a good song. Yes, it I, was. I, I love rock and roll with female singers, man. You do? I, I do. I do. Why? I'm, I'm setting up a playlist for covers week. Mm -hmm. And um, we got two Kill Switch Engage songs that were covered very brilliantly by two females, and they're like no name people. Like really? they're, they're just it's like 400 views. But in my opinion, they did it better than the original. Wow. I, I just love when when uh, when I'm trying to get Lindsay to cover a certain song in time for cover week. But we shall see, Lindsay from Cradle. Yep. Go ahead, Sister Minister. <laughs> Uh wow, this was a really really good song. Yeah, I agree. I, I loved it. I I just I just with rock and roll and the edge and the grungy yep. type sound with yep. the beauty of the of the feminine vocals, it's crazy. Yep. Every time I listen to songs like this, I always get pissed off. I'm like, damn it, I should have met Sorry, you know, 15 years ago, <laughs> and yep. uh. We would have killed it on the stage. We would have killed it. Yeah. Your stage presence would be ridiculous. And I wouldn't even have to play anything complex. It'd just be you and forget it. We'd get an actual legitimate drummer and an actual legitimate guitarist, and I'll just be there for the stage presence and make it happen. We would have, been, we would have killed it. We would have crushed mm -hmm. <laughs> But. Alas, we have a YouTube channel. <laughs> and we hang out with you people. <laughs> I, uh... Yeah, yeah. Plus, I got so, to, I got to do other stuff today. This to song, to me, I I'm sure that I don't. No, I don't. I'm not sure. I I really don't know what she was trying to convey, but it had a very specific meaning for me. So for me, if I can control these, you're very you. controlling. Well, sometimes I gotta put my foot down. Okay. So. I'm looking for a time machine, but I cannot go back and change one single thing. It's staying all intact and I'm looking for a way to feel because I don't feel a thing and it haunts me in this life when you want me to pretend. So like I, you guys know, I grew up in a religious family and so I felt a lot of times like I had to pretend because we had to be like the perfect family um, in our church and in our neighborhood and everywhere we went we had to be like the perfect representation of God all the time and like so if I was feeling depressed, I actually didn't even think that religious people got depressed, but then I would feel depressed. And really? so, yeah, I thought that that was... Did you read the Psalms or...? I, but I always, anytime that there was something in the Bible that didn't fit into like what I thought, I just gave them a pass because it was the Bible. Isn't that weird? What? Yeah, no, I it know. Make, no, it, it doesn't even make sense to me. What I know. Mean? Like if I read, um, so you know how like Jesus would say stuff to people? And you'd be like, why didn't he answer that guy's question? He put like another question. Right. Like, who does this? I would just say, well, it's Jesus. So, and I just let it go, you know? <laughs> and then, right. um, obviously I didn't do that all of my life, but there was like a lot of stuff that I would just say, well, okay. So like reading the Psalms, you know? And the other thing too was Jesus hadn't come yet when David was writing the Psalms. So David had low times, but he wasn't indwelt with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would like come to him and then leave him. So then I kind of had a category for that too. Okay. So anyway. So I always felt like I had to pretend and like all of my life I I always you know I got married I have everything and I always had to pretend and even when things were getting difficult I still had to put the face on and you know and then when my entire world started falling apart or mom what what an entire world feels like when you're from a small town <laughs> it's not really the world but it feels like it so um like I started feeling like everything was just falling down and then um, she's saying because I don't feel a thing she's she was looking for a way to feel because she doesn't feel a thing and like I started getting to that point where I just couldn't feel like I was feeling numb to everything because everything was just going bad and I was going through divorce and all that and then um, but then she says oh I'm looking for a place to be and a place to lay my head I'm drowning in this life come back for me and um, like at that part for me it was like you were literally the only space that I had where I could be as real as what I really was for for good or for bad. Like when I felt like I was like the worst person, you know, I was like suicidal. I'm like, how can you be suicidal when you have a child? You know, like I would send her to her grandmother's because I was feeling so bad and stuff like that at that phase of my life. Yeah. And you were there and I would, you know, tell you things that I wouldn't tell anybody else and stuff. And like... 
I felt like I was drowning in in this life of like, should I try to be this perfect person or should I just like, but I felt like I only had two choices. Either I was the perfect person or I killed myself because, which would, in my opinion, would say, okay, I'm not this perfect person, but I can't live knowing that you think I'm not a perfect person. And so I have to kill myself. You know what I mean? Like it was like this weird thought process that I had. And so when she said, come back for me, I always think about, like, this one is gonna be like, sorry talking so much. <laughs> I always think like, there's that hello song by Adele, and you know, it's there's like a black guy and she's white and stuff, and like, they, they break up in the song. Spoiler! Anyway, and I always think like, what if, like, that sliding doors thing, like, what if I would have chosen a different, what if I would have said the day that you rolled up to City Hall and said, in your, in your way, will you marry me? Um, it was more romantic than will you marry me? But anyway, like when you said that, like what if I would have said no? Or what if I would have like, you know what I mean? There's all these what ifs. And so like in that thought process, when I see come back for me, I think you were the only place that I had where I could lay my head and find a little bit of whatever. And so I would like want you to come back for me. But then it was almost like a double for me because even though you were like that safe place for me, you weren't, you're not a god. So you couldn't completely create that environment for me that I really, really needed. And so for me, that was God. Like I needed like a space with God. But at that time, I didn't even know like, because I, w I was so used to trying to be such a perfect person that I wasn't even sure like, does God want me if I'm not being this perfect person? Like, does he want me, if, if I go through a divorce, does God still want me? Hmm. You know, and I had all these, like, thoughts. And then, um, so then when it said, it squeals, it's in the air tonight, the devil knows my name. It shrieks across the sky tonight, the devil knows my name. That just made me think of, like, when I made the decision that I was like, I'm not staying in this bad relationship. I'm getting out, even though everybody, you know, the majority of everybody was saying I was a bad person for putting my foot down when I wasn't the one that, you know, I, but whatever. And then, um... Choosing moderation was, I was like, hmm, that one kind of just made me stop to pause because people talk about moderation a lot. Um, and I'm not sure if she was saying choosing moderation, I should give it up, like give up moderation. Or um, is she saying she should give up something else and choose moderation? I wasn't sure. Um, but then she said, but I'm not giving it up your way. So like she was like choosing some moderation for her life, but it wasn't going to satisfy those people in my, in my mind. It was like when I made decisions for my life and I said, this is where I'm drawing lines. And I knew it was going to make a bunch of people because again, I came in a very religious family or religious, um, everybody basically that was surrounding me was, you know, had some religious background, you know, all different types, but so when she says, um, I'm not giving it up your way, it screams, it kicks, I feel the weight, it pulls me down, but I'm not giving up that way. Like it, it was like this struggle that I went through for years as I was pulling away from that system. And I'm still dealing with some of it now, you know, like I have a completely whatever. So that was like, it's crazy because there's, you know, people say like, oh, that music meant so much to me, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of times you're trying to capture what the actual artist was saying. But like this one, like meant something a lot to me. And so like, I, um, I, I like having this experience where I can be like, ah, this is what it means to me. <laughs> Cause you guys always talk about that. Cause I didn't grow up with like the music and stuff like that. And then, um, she says, still looking for a way to feel too tired to pr pretend. It haunts me in this life. When you want me to confess, will I ever find peace within? Will these colors fade away? And that part was huge for me because I've always felt like inside, like a very bright person, as in like happy and joyful and like everything that I was going through was making me feel very, very, very dark and cold and lonely. And I always kept wondering like, if my colors were gonna fade away, like my, who I am and like, my aura, I guess, you know, I know Christians don't use that word, but like who, me, the essence of who I was, like was that all gonna fade away with everything? Um, but then she says, I'm wrapped up in these arms, I'm burning in your bed. Um, don't ever come and look for me. Don't you ever say my name. I'm standing 10 men tall. You will not break me. So then on that part, I was like, well, is that something? And then, then it wasn't looking like a good thing. And then I was like, oh, maybe it's those, you know, for me, it was like those people that I, I left behind in my, 
my other life, I guess you could say, left them there and I was like, those people are going to be over there and I'm doing something else with my life and I'm going forward. And when she said I'm standing 10 men tall, that meant a lot to me because, again, growing up in, if, if religion is done wrong, it can be very, very messy and very, very hurtful. And I had this idea of, um, you know, ma kind of male domination, but like not like freedom and being a woman and freedom in both male and female essence and how those come together and work together and stuff. And so when she said, I'm standing 10 men tall, it was like, usually you say, I'm standing 10 feet tall. And it just means you're, you're just like, you're, you're gonna, you're strong now. But she says, I'm standing 10 men tall. And like, I, I always had this feeling like, damn it, why wasn't I born a man? Like, I can't accomplish what I want to accomplish. I can't change the things I want to change because I'm a woman. And as a woman, I don't have as much say in the circles that I was running in. And that like really, really bothered me. And so that reminded me of that aspect of my person. Now, obviously this now, now the way that I view things, I recognize that men have certain strengths that God has given them and women have certain strengths that God has given us. And I don't need to stand 10 men tall to be strong. I can be strong as a woman in who I am. And so, um, cause she says, I'm standing 10 men tall. You will not break me. So within like myself as a woman with who I am in God and stuff, I'm like, okay, no, I can stand strong as a woman and you won't break me. And then, um, how are you feeling? Cause I'm doing all the talking. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. <laughs> okay. Um, You're doing a good job. So then she goes into that thing again. It squeals. It's in the air tonight. The devil knows my name because when, like, I stood up to, like, fight against, like, those things in my life that had held me down and had tried to dictate to me my future and had tried to make my decisions for me. And that was like that in every... I kept finding myself in situations where that was the case for me. And so getting to this space where it was like, it was a scary place when you say, you know, it's like, um, you know, some people, they spend a lot of time in the hospital and then when they leave the hospital, they don't want to leave. They want to go back or people that are in a prison, they're in jail and then they get out. Institutionalized. And yeah, when you get institutionalized, you're comfortable there, even though you may not like it, but it's more comfortable than having just the freedom of being free. And so when we got married, it was very difficult for me because I was used to certain like I know, rules or like guidelines or something and he in your like you sky's the limit you know and so it was like ah and um just finding well, where I it was hard for me because it dawned on me that you were struggling with being treated as an equal yeah and you were kind of like wanting me to direct stuff and I'm like well it was weird I'm because I'm having a hard time with that before before being married, not to you, but like in my previous marriage, before that, I always thought to myself, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't get married because I was such a powerful person on my own. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to like get married and like have to come under someone because that's how I felt like it was supposed to be. And then I obviously did get married. And then like, I took that position, even though I resented that position, but it wasn't the, that's not how it's supposed to be. You know, I can see like the way that we are, I can see, okay, this makes more sense. Like, you know, you have your thoughts, I have mine, and we have our things that we both do and stuff like that, but um, it's not about one person ruling over the other person or, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just, my vision for our relationship, I, we were going to have a mutual partnership and we were right. going to work together and, you know, da 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 but there was all this, like, what should we do here, what should we do here, and well, I'm like... Go ahead, sorry. I was just having a hard yeah. time because you were trying to make me direct you into everything. You know what I think that I never actually thought of until this conversation right now is that, so like growing up, people always wanted to direct me. When I went to college, people wanted to direct me. Right. When I was in my previous marriage, people want, everybody always wanted to direct me. Right. And I always resented and fought against that direction. Right. But then when I got with you, I actually, you're like literally, I, I you know, I really think you're like one of the only people that I respect. Like male wise, I do actually have respect for Ian though. I really like Ian. Well, that's good. Yeah. There you go, Ian. <laughs> um, but like a lot of times, like I just, just don't, you know. I'm sure that there's other people, but like. So anyway, so I think that you I have really, a hard time respecting men. I really, really do. Yeah. But with you, it was like you just carried yourself in such a manly way, not as in like, oh, I'm like, you know, Mr. Tough Guy, but it was just the way you comported yourself spiritually. 
academically, everything. Like you did shit with excellence. And, and that is something that is lacking in a lot of people. They just want to get by with whatever. And you always put your, put your best grind forward. And I really, really respect the hell out of you. And so when we got married, it was like, Oh, well, if I'm all those other people, I didn't want to do that. And so I would fight against it. But with you, I was like, I respect you enough where if you want to, if you want to do rule like that, then I will, you know what I mean? And you were like, no way, I'm not having this. And so that it was like a weird place for me to be in. We'd actually have con. It would be yeah, a lot of arguments over that. Yep. I'm like, yo, yeah. like, I'm, no not, joke. I'm not done. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? He really does that with his fist. Yeah, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and you always look like genuinely confused. Like I was you know so confused. Of, you know when somebody gets hit in the back of the head, they had no idea the bat was coming, and then they're kind of like all, you you had this like dazed and confused, like what is happening here? Yeah, but, I'd, I'd be like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I part of my issue was is that I had spent like years, like not only around you but lots of women in our city. Mm -hmm. And I would spend years to try to create yeah. an environment and a and a, a philosophy of living yep. where men and women could work together as equal partners while at the same time recognizing leadership and all the rest of it, which is it was a very, very difficult, nuanced thing to do. And obviously you in my mind were always my best student. Mm -hmm. So part of it was like I would say like, I didn't teach all this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then melt down like Dick, why are you listening? <laughs> that's not him shaking me, that's his hands just in the air. <laughs> well nobody thinks I was shaking. I always say that no, I, I think people that know us, but like other people that come on the channel they're like <laughs> So I was just kinda like, man, like you know, I, I had I had found a way to get away with uh, feminist, you know, philosophy and stuff in, in Bible mm -hmm. classes and stuff. Yeah. And I was able to really, like, to get evangelicals to call themselves feminists, <laughs> to get evangelicals to, to not completely yep. throw away all feminist ideology was... It can be compared to Alexander it, the Great. It's a hell of a, it's a, <laughs> hell of a play to yeah. make. And so... I, I was able to successfully make that happen. And, yep. You know, we had a lot of we had a couple kind of friend guys on the fringes who mm -hmm. were, you know, were afraid of feminine power. But, oh yeah. But um, yeah. But so I thought when we got together. It was like, oh, I mean, we're there now. The, oh yeah. I feel now like yeah. I feel like we're there now. Yeah. And, and uh, even you know even when we argue and stuff like that, I'm like, yes, okay, good. <laughs> I mean, you're fucking wrong, but good. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I struggled a lot at the beginning with that. Yeah. I was just, I was just like... Well, yeah, because when we were friends, we would argue about stuff. I oh, disagreed yeah. with you on a bunch of things. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You would always do that. You'd always argue. You'd yeah. always, you know... But then, like, once we got married, married it was like this weird, like, how do I... How do I argue with you while still, you know, respecting How much money am I supposed husband? to spend at Walmart? I'm like, I don't care. You're so well, wow. <laughs> now you're like, wait, babe, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> did you just spend $500 on the... <laughs> wait, did you just buy more boots? <laughs> well, of, of course. Uh, it's all. It's all. <laughs> We've got to shoot some videos. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, yeah, yeah, I had a hard time with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are able to figure it out. Anyway. So, I'll get... Where's our this oh, less wonderful. than magical magical um, continue? So then she talks about um, there's no need to push away. There's a thorn in your eye. It's starting to fade. There's no need to push away. There's a thorn in my side. There's no need to push away. You want this and um, this again? I don't know what she was talking about with it, um, but there's Bible verses. We're Christian, so that's what that's how I see it. Um, there's Bible verses that talk about like if you have like this big plank in your eye. You're not supposed to worry about the splinter that's in the other person's eye. Like get the plank out of your own eye before you worry about the other guy's problem. Mm -hmm. But the, and then there's also another verse where um, Paul talks about, he asks God because there's something that's like afflicting him and causing him great pain. And so he asks God if he'll take that away and God tells him, no, I'm not gonna take that away. And he basically tells him, you're gonna, you're gonna be str even with that weakness. You're gonna be strong, and you're gonna be reminded, like you're gonna know that the reason that you have that strength is because I'm giving you that strength. So it would be like, random example, you have like a leg with no bones in it. That's not really what happened, but a leg with no bones, and you're like, God, like just give me the bones in my leg, and he's like, No, like I'm gonna help you walk, and you're gonna know every time that you walk that it's not because you have bones, but it's because I am, I am helping you. And that's kind of like what he was doing with Paul. And so, you know, I had 
I had like everybody deals with like their dark side or their different things that are like their sin like that's the thing for them and so I always used to think of my sin as like a thorn in the flesh but the thorn in my side but you were like that's not at all what it was Paul's thing wasn't sin God wouldn't have left sin with him but um but that's how I always pictured it I'm like there's this one thing that I cannot like stop wanting to be and like but in my religion is so bad and so it was like oh so like that was like just bringing that in and then she says um I'm finally at peace within as the colors fade away she kind of I break free from your arms and burn you in this bed like it's like she gets to this point where she like literally just leaves it she leaves all of that behind and she's like if my my colors fade that's okay and that's what happened to me like I went through a phase where I just felt like everything inside of me just kind of like just died and like everybody like people were blasting me on forums it was like really really terrible it was like a really really terrible time it was very very difficult and then when I got past it like I finally got to a point where I was like you know what if you want to like be that type of person that's going to try to just destroy somebody when you have no basis for what you're talking about then that's you you know and I moved on with my life in feeling less like you don't worry so much about other people's opinions of you but I cared a lot about other people's opinions but it was literally destroying my life so I'm like okay like I need to what does God think about me you know obviously I want us to have a good relationship so how can we work on this but then she says I'm no stranger to your black streak I see through you're my enemy I ought to know I want to know you better than that so it was like there are certain people that are still within my vicinity that I still interact with and stuff but like in the back of my head I like know okay this is who that person is so even though they're put on their happy face or whatever like that's who they are and that's who they've been and even though I wasn't looking at it before and I overlooked a lot of things like that's who they are so you know that who who was it Benjamin Franklin or something it was like don't you know forgive your en enemies but never forget their faces like to me it was like that like I'm no stranger to who you really are or that system and how that system can like it has a black streak you yeah. know Maya Angelou the Maya Angelou quote was when somebody tells you who they are believe them yep yeah 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 as in they tell you who they are by their actions we believe you but yeah then she says I'm looking for a time machine but I cannot go back and change one single thing. It's all staying intact. Don't you ever come and look for me. Don't you ever say my name. You'll be waiting all your life. Don't come back for me. And that to me was the me that I was two years ago, three years ago, five years ago is not the me that I am now. And you can go looking for that version of Sori, but you will never ever find her because she's gone. Like I'm a, I'm a different me, I'm a stronger me. Um, I think that there are some aspects of me that I haven't fully matured in yet. So, you know, maybe the older version of Sori was more mature than this version, but this version of Sori is better. I like her much more. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that line though, that part, I'm no stranger to your black streak, I see through, you're my enemy, I ought to know, I wanna know you better than that. I think that that's a, that was significant because she recognized that the person was her enemy. Yeah. But there was this like yo-yo thing and it's like I should know mm -hmm. and, and she's getting to the point where she wants to know better than to go keep going back into mm -hmm. that situation. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I do think I probably swing too far to the other side because I I'm never in danger of going back to bad situations, but I do, <laughs> I do think I probably cut bait with people a little bit too quickly. I yeah. do think that that's true. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not really like, there's not really a lot of arithmetic to it as far as like when I decide like to be done in a situation. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things with growth where I had a pretty significant, you know, argument with Zonia and, and you know, mm -hmm. you know, I've made reference to the statement that, mm -hmm. that, that she made, but it was one of those things where, um, um, where I was like thinking to myself, this is an opportunity for you to actually grow as a person. You know, it's more like a God situation. Like, you know, I don't need to grow in this area. Like, I know pretty well like mm -hmm. who my enemies are. Mm -hmm. You know, but I, I think that on my side, I need to grow as to who my friends are. You know, whereas you, 
you were surrounded by a lot of people who were actually your enemies and you didn't really know that they were enemies and you know whatever but I think that you know mm -hmm. so that's kind of where my growth is coming is like being able to be like well you know there are people that belong in this category but I mean Vin really like is that person really in this category mm -hmm. you know so um, I was very very grateful for you know I mean I was mad you know what I mean? But I wasn't, but it, it, when I get, I get in certain moods, like if I get in this type of certain mood, like I'm not really mad, like emotionally mad. It's just like, there's like a switch. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I, whenever I see that switch, I go, oh, okay, done. Mm -hmm. You know? And so of course the switch didn't go off with Zillion. She yeah, was, at, close. she was advocating for something else. Yeah, yeah. Me, you know, like, you know, that, that's, that's like, there's a handful of people that are like, I've seen you for a while so I like kind of I looked over at you I said oh he's tight and I said oh it's Zonia I said <laughs> they'll be very chummy by the end of the night and sure enough that's what happened you guys said what you had to say you guys got to the bottom of it and then it was good you know well yeah yeah I mean we've always I feel like that you've cut bait for very specific reasons it's just not out of nowhere no so it's, it's, I'm, it's not a, I, I hear what you're saying I'm just not sure I can't think of any situations of somebody that you cut bait with where I was like mm. oh yeah I yeah you shouldn't yeah I agree I well, about that thank one. you, thank you for telling me that I was wrong well, for that. Well, I did kind of tell you, and we no. got in a disagreement about it. Not the way that, then... not the way that Sonya did. No. But but, but uh, <laughs> somebody else. Luck. I can't get it back. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it, it's just one of those things where I'm like, eh, but you know, and that's why when certain situations happen with certain people in your circumference, even after the whole thing happened. I just say I just I just kept my yeah. mouth shut on it, and I was like, you know, yeah. I'm gonna support you, and da 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 da, and I just kept quiet. Yeah. Because I know right now some folks are, oh, it's that Vin, it's that Vin is the oh, reason why sure. she. But I I stayed quiet, and yeah. I was just like, because I'm like, hey, you know, I I don't know, I know what I would do in this situation yeah. if somebody was like that, and somebody was that fucking treacherous and traitorous. Mm -hmm. uh, I know what I would do. Yeah. But. You know, I was like, man, Van, just be quiet, bruh. So, and then you kind of came to your own conclusions and did what you had to do. And, you know, and not, I mean, nothing's permanent. You know what I mean? It's, it's not like that. But mm -hmm. some people, man, good lord. Um, it's just sad because <clears throat> the ending, she says, relax, it's going to fade. Just relax, it's going to fade. So for me, that part was like, um, you feel the intensity of situations. And then eventually that intensity does fade. Like... The pain that you feel because somebody hurt you or the pain that you feel because um, someone has passed from this world into the next or mm -hmm. the pain that you feel like the intensity it doesn't always stay that intense um, you will it's not to say that oh you're completely fine and that your wounds are completely healed and you don't even remember it. it's not that it's just the, the intensity of the initial whatever it's not it doesn't say stuff stuff does fade mm -hmm. but um and then it was just the, you know, the thoughts of what could fade. Like, it's not just the things that people do to you, but also, you know, when you feel like that versions of yourself or whatever, like those things will fade, but yeah. Yeah, and I think, I think, um, um, I mean, I, I think this is about an abusive relationship. Like, I'm taking it very literally as as far as, like, you know, she's... She's in a burning, she, she's, literally. Well, no. What? Well, I'll tell you something later. I'm not going to share it on video, but... She initially says, she says, I'm burning in your bed mm -hmm. at the top, right? But then when she kind of comes full circles, I break free from your arms and burn you in this bed. And I think the burning there is just... Hit him turning around and not seeing her anymore like that's the that's the burning you know so like you know giving up that control you know him not being able to control her anymore mm -hmm. and, and her being able to break free and leave like that's that's what she's yeah that's how she's referring to it so it's a really really good song yeah. i just loved i just loved it sonically um i loved it you know I love the guitar. I love when the lead part started toward the last mm -hmm. third of the song. That was really, really yep. good. They did such a good job. Vocally, 
This is a 10 for me. Oh, me too. Uh, we're going to be jamming to this in Walmart. Are you yep. coming with me to Walmart? I shall. Oh, very good. Give me a kiss. Very good. Thank you. This is encouraging. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I thoroughly appreciated it. And uh, yeah. I'm, well, we got to go. It's a little <laughs> this is This is one of those reviews I'm going to watch again because just hearing you kind of, you haven't really, you don't, you've kind of like poke, poke here and there, but like never really. Yeah. So. So cool. All right, there you go. Thank you very much, sir. Vietnam. <laughs> you were right, Neil. <laughs> Sorry, out. Gone. <laughs> he said I was gonna like it.